Hey everyone, this is Rick Levine here at Tarot.com Central Headquarters in out just outside of Portland, Oregon, uh, home of the fires. Um, and uh, I'd like to start and just share a little musical clip with you. I've seen fire and I've seen rain. I've seen fire and I've seen rain. I've seen fire and I've seen rain. I've seen fire. And so I've seen rain. here's the deal James Taylor didn't know that we would be seeing fire and rain. And this is part and only part of what's going on right now. We are in a state of um, planetary, um, I wanted to say meltdown. I'm not sure it's quite at that extreme, but it's, it's severe as to what's going on. Um, on one hand, we can simply look at the um, situation in Houston, Texas, where the largest amount of water that's ever been dumped in recorded history in one place in the United States has occurred. Um, I mean, they're calling this a one in 500 year or a one in 1,000 year weather happening. But the fact of the matter is that we've only been keeping records for 100 years. So we really don't have a clue. Nevertheless, it's extraordinary. What's more extraordinary is that right on the tail of it, without even getting a chance to do a full inhale, <laughs> we're already uh, experiencing what's now being called the largest recorded um, uh, hurricane in the Atlantic basin ever, ever recorded. And this is extraordinary. For one of these two events to occur would be extraordinary. For both of them to occur back to back, is incredibly extraordinary and it's not lost on me and the other astrologers around the world that eclipses seem to correspond with natural um if i say natural disasters that's from the human point of view from the earth's point of view these are natural cleansing and or expressions of energy. Now, I'm not trying to make less of them. It's just that we tend to look at things from the standpoint of our own experience. In fact, we do that so much that we here in the United States have a very aberrated view of what's been going on around the planet. I spent a little time on Google um, earlier today and, um, and then in the spirit of... Uh, uh, pre-digital technology, I actually wrote this shit down, which, you know, it's like people really do that still, pencils, <laughs> paper. Um, but when I did a search on flood, I came up with 100 responses in Google um, that related to flood and Houston. And that would lead us to believe that the flooding in Houston is what's going on right now, weather on the planet. However, over a thousand people have died in floods in northern India, um, in uh, Nepal, in Bangladesh, in Afghanistan, Pakistan, um, Assam had flooding. Now again, understand that when eclipses occur, we look at events for a few months before and a few months after. And over the last couple of months, we've had people um, in dangerous situations that have been called one in a century or one in 500 year occurrences all around the planet. Just as an example, um, just a couple of weeks ago, um, there were 300 plus people killed in, in Sierra Leone's capital, Freetown, because there were flash floods and landslides. Is that on our map? No. I mean, how about Icelandic floods from volcanic activities that have raised lakes and caused rivers to flood. Um, recent flooding, over 16 million people have been affected by the floods in northern India. In fact, just last week, um, over 21 people were killed in one single building collapse in Mumbai, a city larger than Los Angeles, 
that right now is inundated with water. Um, and the last extreme flooding that they had there was the same year that we had Katrina here in New Orleans in the United States. So again, this is more than just what's going on in the United States. Um, in the past month or so, we've had flooding in Akita, Japan. Over 120,000 people were evacuated. Paris has recorded the heaviest rainfall since 1880. Um, South Korea had rain at the extent of seven inches in an hour. New Zealand had four areas of New Zealand declared national disaster areas. There was flash flooding in Istanbul, Jilan, um, China, in Moscow, Lagos, Nigeria, Vietnam. I mean, it's not just the Gulf of Mexico. Now, the Gulf of Mexico might have its own you know, serious considerations, but we are being inundated with water, with flooding, and there's something here that's very important that's happening, and, um, and I find it very interesting that this is happening um, at the same time when we have such denial about climate change or about global warming. You see, when, when the temperatures become water, well, water, when the temperatures become warmer, the water heats up. And when water heats up, more of it evaporates into the air. Now, uh, we think of rain as just rain. But the fact of the matter is that the relationship between the sun and the moon is what creates the tides. And when it dumps several trillion gallons of water out of the sky on a city like Houston, this is really just high tide. The fact that the water has been sucked up into the air and rains down, it's still, we're still talking tidal flows. And so that this is connected with an eclipse, which is an alignment of the sun and the moon, uh, makes, makes a lot of sense. Now, if it was just flooding, if it was just flooding in Texas, or now um, Hurricane Irma um, having already plowed its way through uh, Puerto Rico and, um, and heading apparently toward, toward Florida, the largest and most powerful winds ever recorded in a hurricane. Um, if this was only, if this was the extent of our story, that would be still very, very powerful, but it's really just one tip of a many faceted iceberg. Um, the second piece of this is the fires. Um, again, James Taylor singing, I've seen fire and I've seen rain. The fires here on the west coast of the United States are, are, are out of control. I mean, it literally, literally out of control. We have fires burning in British Columbia, Idaho, Montana, Washington, Oregon, California. I did a search, a map of the fi wildfires in California yesterday, and I was overwhelmed by the map that showed about 40 fires raging from Los Angeles County all the way up to the border, up toward uh, um, Mount Shasta. And then I saw a link next to the map that said for 75 more fires, click here. Um, I, I live in Seattle. I drove down yesterday from Seattle to Portland to be here at tarot.com. I've never seen, uh, I've, I've never seen the sky the way it is now. Um, the, it, it, there's no clouds in the sky, but you barely can see a few hundred yards because of the thickness of the smoke. Um, people in Seattle, um, yesterday morning, woke up to ash um, on their cars and and all around. Um, I don't know, has it been here the same in, in yeah. Portland? Um, coming down from Seattle to Portland, um, I encountered a sign on the interstate that an entire section of the interstate, um, I-84, which is a major full-traveled interstate, is closed, closed because of fires. Um, it, it's absolutely um, out of control. It's nuts. Um, the largest uh, recorded brush fire in Los Angeles in the city proper ever um, was contained just yesterday or the day before. Um, the heat wave combined with the dryness combined with who knows what has created um, a, a season of forest fires 
that we will not forget. Now, I understand that forest fires are a natural part of nature. Um, in a way, it's a Uranian aspect because Uranus astrologically is lightning. It's what releases tension. And when Uranus strikes, Uranus doesn't care what happens afterwards. Its only job is to release the tension. And so when lightning strikes and starts a fire, and many of these fires were in fact started by lightning, naturally started, um, that when they burn, um, it's not the responsibility of lightning to, to limit itself once the fire starts. It'll burn until they burn out. Many of the fires here in Oregon and in Washington um, will simply burn until the rainy season starts, hopefully any day now, but certainly in the next few weeks. Um, but the fact of the matter is that when Uranus strikes, when lightning strikes, often the clearing of the decks, the burning of the forest is, is, is horrific, but it also does an invigoration that allows new, new uh, 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 flora, new, new trees, et cetera, to grow in an invigorated state. The problem is that there's a difference between just natural forest fires that burn maybe a few million acres a year. I know that sounds like a large number, but it's a real number compared with how many square miles right now are under forest fire siege in the West. So we have fire, we have water. We have a planet that is, um, is under siege from many directions. Um, we, we have toddlers carrying nuclear weapons that are angry at each other. Uh, now, I'm not trying to uh, throw, um, oh, I don't want to even say gasoline onto the fire. I'm not trying to stir up more fear in any way, but it is rather um, frightening uh, to think of the uh, nuclear weaponry now in the hands of uh, um, uh, North Korea and the United States and have these two countries basically in a uh, verbal shouting match with each other. And as long as we're talking about verbal shouting match, and this is an astrology broadcast, we probably should tie all this back to the fact that we just had an extraordinary total eclipse of the sun that did impact the United States more than anywhere else in the, uh, in the world, but it certainly is having impact everywhere. But the fact is that, um, that since the eclipse, we've had Mercury retrograde from Virgo back into Leo over the point of the eclipse, where Mars in Leo was moving forward and went over the point of the eclipse at the same time that retrograde Mercury did, meaning that Mercury and Mars lined up. Can I get myself in line there? There we go. Mercury, <laughs> it's everything's backwards, Hudla. Um, Mercury and Mars lined up exactly with the eclipse point that still lined up with the fixed star Regulus. And again, I know I talked about this in last week's broadcast, but there's a sense of Regulus being tied up with revenge. And it's almost like the planet itself is getting even. But Mercury is communication. Mars is anger. We have angry words being spoken. We have words that once spoken can't be taken back. We have not only this shouting match uh, backed up by nuclear weapons between North Korea and the United States, but we also have a president in the United States shouting angry words um, at, at many people in the country that, of course, many of us are very offended by. Um, and we're talking about the support or the, um, yeah, the support um, of this administration, apparently, of white supremacy groups and neo-Nazi groups and the hate that's being thrown um, at uh, people of color, Latinos, Jews, um, immigrants in general. And this, of course, culminating with the rescinding of the uh, uh, DACA and all that's ensuing from there. So we're kind of in a state of, of imbalance that is not, um, that is not unlikely at the time of an eclipse. Now, the fact is that Mars has moved over the eclipse point and is now in Virgo. Mercury has turned direct after its three week retrograde period, and it's sitting on the eclipse point right now. So, the, so there's still energy being put there. Um, Mercury actually moves into Virgo on the 10th, um, but it ain't over yet. And what happens is, 
that Venus, which is still moving through Leo, by September 18th and 19th, Venus becomes the last of the planets that have been clustered around the sun, the sun, Mercury, Mars, and now Venus being the last of the group to move through that transition point from the end of Leo to Virgo, which means that around the middle of the month, um, September 18th and 19th in particular, we may get another bump of all of this uh, eclipse energy. So what do we do individually in all of this? How do we hold the position of, of balance in these times of extreme imbalance? And I think that really becomes the question because we can talk about um, all the frightening things going on in times of great emergency, in times of great stress. It certainly makes sense to pay attention to what's going on rather than hiding our heads um, in, in, a, in the sand. Or um, I saw yesterday online someone shared with me um, an ostrich pillow that you can buy. What's that for? It's for hiding your head. It, it buries your entire head in this pillow. Um, but, but denial doesn't necessarily help anything. Neither does freaking out and running around like crazy, not knowing what to do. It's how do we find a place of internal balance in the eye of the hurricane? Because in the eye of the hurricane, there is stillness. And within each of us, we have that same place. And the more of us that can move toward the center, toward a center of holding a position of, of internal peace, harmony, and balance, I mean, it's all crazy and out of whack. And at the same time, it's all okay. Everything's right on schedule, whatever that means. Now, I'm not saying that to say everything is okay means that we should just do nothing about it. We all need to engage in however we choose to engage, whether it's on an active um, political basis or on an interactive basis or, or, or talking about the issues or simply raising the awareness that we have in our own home, family, and relationships. And no one is exempt here. We all have stuff to work on that's close to home. But in doing that, we actually impact the greater. The last book that Carl Jung wrote before he died was a book called The Undiscovered Sense, <laughs> the, the Undiscovered Self, The Undiscovered Self. And in this book, he, he projects a world where there will be increasing um, uh, unexpressed anger that comes out in global international politics. And he says that no wars will, that the end of war will not come about by politicians signing treaties, that the end of external aggression will come about when all the people within the world find their own inner balance and inner peace. And, and, and it, this is not some new age, goody, goody, utopian dream. The fact is that we, we all need to do whatever work we need to do on the outer, whether it's actually working to clear up the brush so that a fire can't spread, or whether it's actually dealing with issues in our own personal lives, or whether it's engaging in national or international politics at whatever level you can. But all of that has to be done in correspondence with the inner work because ultimately changes on the outside are correspondent to changes on the inside. So here we are. And what's around the bend? I'm an astrologer. I don't have a damn clue. I know that things are out of whack and out of balance. I know that that the things that are out of whack and are out of balance are being fed and fueled by the fires of Mars being pumped by the winds of Mercury, whether those are dry winds out on the, on the plains in the mountains or whether they're the dry winds of our unemotionally attached words that are fueling the fires of, of, of hostility or aggression. We need to find ways around that. We need to think before we talk. We need to um, monitor the words that we say so we don't just fuel the forest fires, not just out there burning in the hills of, of uh, Montana, Washington, Oregon, California, or Canada, but also to not fuel the fires of the heart, 
We need to be aware that, that, that what we do and what we say has consequences, and we all have our own individual role in cleaning that up. How do we do? Where are we? Do we have questions? Do we have comments? Are we out of here? Uh, one question, Maria asked, uh, is this part of a larger cycle that will complete itself at the next solar eclipse in this cycle, she's saying in seven years? Hi, Maria. The answer is, I don't know. <laughs> um, I, I, there are many things that connect current events to events in the past and to events in the future. Eclipses and eclipse cycles are certainly one of them, but we have a lot more going on than just eclipses. I've talked about this in, in many times in my monthly um, in my monthly YouTubes and certainly here at tarot.com and on the tarot.com site and in my dailies, but the fact of the matter is that a lot of what we're experiencing now is in a larger container that originated back in the mid-late 60s at the Uranus-Pluto conjunction and then came back into fruition over the last decade as Uranus squared Pluto in the sky. Um, even though that aspect is technically waning, the fact is that that's with us still for years to come. And so e whether, whether it's eclipses or something else, the fact of the matter is we can never take an individual astrological aspect or occurrence out of the context of the larger um, environment that really goes backward in time and forward in time in both directions. Thank you all for stopping by. Don't forget, if you're not a member at Tarot.com, go to their site, register on the, uh, on the Facebook page, or go to Tarot, T-A-R-O-T dot com, and sign up there. You can get my daily sent to you for free by Tarot.com, and uh, we'll see you all online. And hang in there. Keep breathing and keep centered.